Uh, right, we see a clip following this of the Pat McAfee show, White Six getting involved there and delivering a tape that they then play. Uh, and this was the bit I just thought was amazing. Yeah. Um, Eric Rowan, interviewed effectively by Uncle Howdy off screen. He asks how he's been, and, oh boy, this is a tough watch. Uh, Rowan says, the last few years have been very hard. He used to have a family. They were unstoppable. They always had each other's backs, and then one day the whole world changed. He lost a brother. The person in this world who believed in him more than anyone, gone. It knocked him on his ass. In those situations, you get up, you wipe the dust off, you keep moving. That's what you've got to do. Life goes on. And then just when he thought he had everything going, his other brother was gone too. He starts crying here. Uh, he had no more family, no more will. He fell down a well. He couldn't get out. He didn't want to. Why? Why would he want to? He felt, felt catatonic, numb to everything. Who's going to miss him He's just rolling. Oh, I was heartbreaking that. Really, really well delivered. Um, he gets thrown the, the goat mask um, uh, and asks, how does that make him feel? And you get clips of him from the Wyatt family, of course. He says the mask gives him hope. And he was at his lowest. Uh, and he reached out, got pulled up. Uh, he saw the hand. He accepted it. He needed help. He had a purpose to help those like himself. Um, and the mask reminds him of that beacon of hope. They're going to take the broken hearts and make some beautiful art. This was like staggering, really. I mean, is this working? It's the best performance of something that's hard not for me. I can recall off the top of my head, like Bill Dallas has been great in these sit-downs. Yeah. These sit-downs are, in fact, yes, I know in the live context they are doing, you know, effects, shall we say. And you can, your own head cannon determines what's going on with these effects, and everyone's going to argue or discuss or debate or whatever. They have, in fact, tethered this to reality um, as sort of promised or at least fed through the media. Um, it's weird, though. I mean, they, they go on maskers and you can't help but root for them. It's bizarre, but it's working. It's working like the usual. By now, right, I'm trying to phrase this delicately, by now, the lifespan of such a thing something laughable would have happened already. Yeah. When nowhere near that, yeah. Um, this Rowan promo was so unbelievably great. Like, you kind of want him to terrorize people yeah. and show them what he's got. What was so perfect about that line in particular, right, was the fans, I don't think, believe it, but you can believe that he believes it, and he was at that lowest ebb, because what's happened is that there's been a, like, the evolution of Eric Rowan slash Eric Reed, Redbeard wrestler and the perception of the wrestler um, is that the Wyatt family emerged like is this, this the trio that they settled upon um, on the main roster 2013 whatever and the, the crack was it wasn't quite the shield where you could see right I can see that wrestler being the work rate guy that guy being the matinee top star and that one being like a rare brawling unhinged lunatic there was the creative next Undertaker, Bray Wyatt. Mm -hmm. There was that best big man in wrestling in Luke Harper. And then there was Rowan. Yeah. Like people, you know, I've, I've, like that battleground match against the Usos was incredible. Like Rowan was awesome in those six mans with the shields, but ultimately he had the, the same selling point as Harper, but people knew Harper to be the better yes, worker. Yes, that's fair. Um, so when they were, you know, we were forecasting their, like, their singles runs, you you never really were optimistic for what Rowan could do, and that when he said that's oh, just Rowan, like you know, the worst one's the one that's left. Sort of that was his headspace. Yeah. You can believe that he believes it because of what the perception was of each wrestler at the time, and what's happened since. And I hope he knows this because it was so, it was delivered in such a believable, almost heartbreaking way that you hope he knows mm. is that he's every time he's cameoed. In AEW, he's been absolutely incredible, incredible, um, and it's not just a like a pity thing. No, with no. Rowan is that he has earned like well before they are really trying to make you sympathise with them. He's earned the fact that oh, you know what, people overlooked him at the time. He's great, and everyone hopes he's doing well. So this is a genuinely like fair play to him as well for doing this. I mean, it must have been incredibly difficult to confront not only this profound twice-over grief, but reckoning with his own sort of 
life and career all in one promo. And if it if it's ever meant anything, I hope he knows that it has. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, really. Like, it's always going to be a weird dynamic. This with Bo and, and Eric Rowan in. I mean, obviously knowing everything that's happened, but. My God, if, you, if you're not rooting for Rowan after this, I don't know what, what will make you. Yeah, I know. Amazing, amazing. Best literally. 